Well, on a much brighter note, prepare to be amazed by the printers that work in 3D. That's right, they can print items you can hold in your hands and use every day. It's hard to imagine, but as they say, seeing is believing. Here's Brian Seymour. If you can think of it, you can make it with a 3D printer. They're printing organs, kidneys, livers are being printed, uh, printing bones. Uh, so we're actually, it's almost the Frankenstein of, of, is becoming a reality. So you take the original manufactured glaucoma implant and you've, you've come up with your own here on the 3D printer. Firstly, it's simple. A 3D printer is the same as an ordinary printer with one difference. A 3D printer prints one layer, then prints another one on top of it, then another, then another, then another. Controversy over what they can produce is quickly giving way to excitement over how they can repair the human body. How long would it take the printer to print out something like this? Uh, I think this is a number of hours uh, in order to print these types it's of structures. It's not days, it's not weeks. No, no, it's not days. Uh, no. uh, we're looking at turning things around in hours. Professor Gordon Wallace leads a team based at the University of Wollongong dedicated to revolutionising how we manage the human body, specifically replacing injured or diseased cells organs and bones with printed ones. The treatment would be using patients' own stem cells uh, that would be incorporated into these 3D structures, printed and implanted to facilitate the regeneration process. 3D printers can be loaded with many different types of so-called ink. These new inks can be made from plastics, metals and even organic tissue. And what's that? Is that some kind of joint? Yeah, so this is a a scaled version of a hip implant, as you can see, which has been printed with a three-dimensional metal printer. Imagine printing out one of your own organs and having it implanted without the risk of rejection. Soon, we'll be doing it. Little Kaiba Gianfrido was born with arteries constricting his windpipe. Every day, he stopped breathing and had to be resuscitated. Quite a few of the doctors said that he had a good chance of not leaving the hospital alive. The solution, 3D printing. Doctors at the University of Michigan scanned his trachea and designed a splint especially for him, then implanted it. Today, baby Kaiba is fine. As he ages, his body will absorb the splint, so he won't need further surgery. It was amazing. As soon as the splint was put in, the lungs started going up and down. Professor Peter Chung joined the team's new centre at St Vincent's Hospital in Melbourne where their research is leading the world in the race to create human body part replacements. It's a huge potential because what it means is we can address body part loss, injury, degeneration. Up till now, most attention on 3D printers has focused on guns. It, it's actually not legal to print out a real working gun and even to have the blueprints or the files to do that would be illegal. Mark Peskowski sells 3D printers here in Australia. He says the implications go far beyond medicine to fundamentally changing society, where much of what we need and what we want at home, we can make at home. In 10 years' time, every house will definitely have a 3D printer. I see within five years, all schools, primary schools, high schools will have printers. Uh, I see a change in the way that consumers are purchasing or consuming products. You can buy a personal 3D printer of the type used to produce these objects from a few hundred dollars up to several thousand dollars and make everything from jewellery to cutlery to models to tools to shoes, collectible figurines, vases, just about any knick-knack you can think of and working parts to repair almost any household appliance and on and on it goes.